Oh. Can you hear me now? We can hear you loud and clear. Looking good. Okay. Looking beautiful. Thank you, thank you, Darren. Good morning, everyone. This is our last session. Ah, the anxiety from yesterday. I was like, um, oh, my Fridays are gonna be different. Yeah. So yes, Darren, I'm excited and I would like to say that as a facilitator and coach, I've learned a lot from everyone in the program, especially from the businesses. And congratulations to all the participants for getting this far, making time to attend and still run your businesses. Because running a business is a very tough, tough job. Um, you are accountable for everything. You don't have a boss to report to. You the boss, you the employee, you the marketer, you are everything. So it's been really uh, a busy, busy last few months for, for everybody who's been participating in the program. So, and, but I don't want to forget something. We we know that we've got our experts, but some of our, most of our, all of our experts actually will be in the judging panel, including our COO uh, for Driven. Uh, so our judging panel today will comprise of Mike Mukoka, who is our finance expert and tax specialist, and then Advocate Kalam Kawana, who is the director at Mukawana Legal, um, and, and then Rusuna Maimele, who's the director at uh, Ruben Concerts, and uh, he's a marketing and communication expert, and Harold Mulefa, who's our COO of uh, driven to succeed yes yeah so maybe let's look at the program how the program so those are our judges our beautiful judges guys and handsome um so let's look at the program let me see how it looks like the screen is a bit small all right so this is uh obviously we're welcoming now it's me and darren there uh, uh at the moment ruth is not here uh, but we will a chat to Ruth later and but we're gonna have Owen at 10 20 so we are early guys um which is good I'm, I'm happy as long as we're not late so from 10 20 to 10 25 we'll have Owen who's the CEO at Driven uh, uh, that's my boss okay so we will he'll be just talking to implementation the whole program how everything went uh and then we'll get into our pitching process and then adjudication from adjudication we get feedback from from the judges uh, who the winners are and then uh, we'll get into our funders funders note and then our vote of thanks. So this is really a short program. As always, we always spend two hours together. So that's how uh, we're going to roll today. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you, Portia. What a privilege to be your MCs today. I know we're going to kick off right away with the program. And so Portia, over to you to introduce our first speaker. Okay, so um, I just want to say before, just so that people just understand what's going to happen. So note that all the businesses that are pitching, uh, you need to be ready because the, ten, the top 10 that I'm going to call out now, you need to be ready because the judges are going to listen to your recording and then they're going to give you feedback and they might ask you questions, all right, if they want clarity. So just make sure that uh, you unmute when the questions are asked uh, and then uh, you are given feedback, all right? And we we'll only give, obviously we've got three minutes of the recording and then two minutes of the feedback and questions. Great stuff, let's start then. So first up is- No, bef before we get there, Portia. Uh, oh, we, well, to... we have to name our 10, our top 10. No, 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 don't, don't name the 10 yet. Don't name the 10 yet, don't jump the gun. We need to get a, a talk from Owen first. So Owen oh, is the yes. chief executive for- Guys, I'm in a hurry. I'm in a hurry for the judge, for the teacher. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Owen, 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 please. So I'm going to introduce Owen. Owen is just going to give us, um, share with us the program structure because I'm sure some people don't know where we started, what went on. So Owen, please take it away and just tell us about the program and how it went. Thank you so much, uh, Portia. Uh, good morning, everybody. I hope everybody can hear me very well. So as Portia sort of mentioned, uh, my name is Owen and I lead the team here at uh, driven um, and leading the team just means I work together with uh, the different team members, uh, including uh, Portia, uh, Darren, and some people that are in the back that you have not seen for for most of the time. That's Chantel, that's Harold, and also the team at the foundation uh, led by Mr. Ayavom, Simang, Ruth, and Kuvi. Um, but I think what today really signifies is the coming to an end of a pilot or an experiment that we've been doing for the last couple of months. It's a bit surprising for me that we've already come to the end of the month. I mean, we started out quite running around like headless chicken in the big headless, headless chickens at the beginning. But I think somewhere in the first two sessions, we found our flow. And, uh, but in finding our flow, uh, we really were able to deliver what I think has been a quite a great uh, program up, up, up until date. 
but I think to start off, what's important for us to kind of like uh, discuss is to is why help us earn this. Um, I think there's a lot of stats out there that state that a lot of small businesses um, do not succeed, not because they don't have a good product or a good service. It's mostly because they can't manage their finances uh, very well. And so that inability to manage finances is one of the Achilles heels of a lot of small businesses. And so when the foundation uh, together with uh, the ECIC came together, uh, they kind of put together this pilot of a program called Up Plus Earn Biz, which puts together uh, the best of the flame program and the old uh, L plus earn program that is within the Assessor Foundation's table to bring about a solution for small businesses run by young people that could help them build financial capabilities in them. And this is what we've been going through for the last couple of uh, months, eight months. And as we come to the end of the month, uh, we think we'll really help some of you gain capabilities in managing your business. If not, I think there's quite a few more resources on the Assessor Foundation website and also on other platforms that you can access to just help build yourself uh, and increase your capabilities to manage your business. I think as one of the uh, guest speakers always says, if you can't measure it, you cannot improve it. Uh, and I think that's very true for uh, the business that they were running now. If you can't track and manage your finances, if you don't see where your money is going, if you don't see where the profits come from, if you don't see where uh, your expenses or what the expenses are or what the product that's making you the most money is, you really would not survive in this uh, environment. So that's what L plus Earn Business has, 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 has been about. And we just wanna thank everybody who took part in making this a success. Uh, definitely coming firstly from the ECIC and also the foundation. Uh, then the team that has been able to kind of deliver this program, uh, Portia, Darren, Chantel, Nokopila, and Harold uh, in the back. But most importantly, uh, the entrepreneurs and the participants that were in the program, that is yourselves. I think this program would not have really gone to come to this position had you not been, uh, had you not taken time out of your business to come and be, a, to participate in this program for two hours. Two hours in a small business is quite a long time. So the fact that you took away two hours from your business to be with us is, is definitely appreciated and we really appreciate you being here. What today is about is number one, celebrating the journey and celebrating what you've gone through, but also looking at the top 10 uh, businesses that were, uh, that had, that were selected in the pitching. So first of all, right at the beginning, we had about 557 people apply to be in this program. That's what that was in the advocacy phase. It was around early March, early May, somewhere there. Um, and the applicants that we went through and selected were about five, um, 48, I think, if the numbers, uh, if I remember the number properly, uh, that's where we were selected. But eventually, we only started out with 53 uh, businesses. So out of 557 that applied, we ended up with 53 that were selected in the program. And it's a national program, and it's from the fact that we have representation for, from all of the nine provinces in the in the in the country. So we've got small businesses from the Free State, we've got small businesses from the Eastern Cape, we've got small businesses from Gauteng, we've got small businesses from almost everywhere. Which I think is quite an achievement for a program that is virtual and that is online. So again, thank you for just applying uh, to be part of this uh, program. Whereas we come to the pitching, uh, we had about twenty one. Uh, people that were brave enough to submit uh, pitches out of the about 53 people that were participating. And out of those 21, we had to at least narrow it down to about 10 that way uh, that we're going to show off uh, today. It's not to say the other 11 were not great uh, ideas. I think it was such a difficult time to select off the, the 10. It was quite a difficult process to go through all of them, but we had to, we had to have uh, the 10 that were selected. So just to make it clear um, the 10 were selected based on uh, four or five different criteria. The most important was engagement, which weighted 50%. So engagement meant uh, your participation and attendance in the online webinars. Secondly, your participation in the coaching uh, webinars, but also in the individual coaching. That included also submission of quiz, submission of um, homeworks that were given off by uh, both Nokpila and, and the team. So that criteria alone contributed to 50% of the overall points. 
And then what you shared in the pitch then contributed the rest of the other 50%. This included your understanding of value proposition, understanding of finances, and then also understanding of marketing and how you're gonna channel your business into the community. And so that is a criteria that is, was used to select the top 10 of the businesses. If anybody wants to know a bit more about these criteria, feel free to reach out to Nokpila and you can receive a document around how, how the selection went. So eventually from the 21, we narrowed it down to the top 10. So we've got top 10 that later on, I will not be the one to share the names. Uh, I think Darren and Poshi are gonna share with us who those top 10 were. But thanks to everybody who was brave enough to just submit those 21 uh, videos that we saw. I think uh, we have such a great cohort uh, of entrepreneurs and I wish you well in your journey going forward. Thank you so much, uh, Darren, and over back to you. Thank you, Owen. What a beautiful speech um, by Owen. Don't you guys think Owen can run for uh, minister of something, minister of small business or minister of something, something? That is beautiful. Thank you so much, Owen. And obviously looking dapper as well, um, as always. And what a, what a privilege. Um, I, I don't think we give Owen enough credit for the amount of work that he does behind the scenes to yeah. make sure this program is a success. So thank you, Owen. It was really great to hear from you in today's session. Portia, what did you think about that? He knows, I always tell him, every time he makes a speech in any uh, event, I always tell him like, he's the best. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and we're looking for a president in our country, so. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely beautiful. Yeah. All right, so so, so Portia has already touched on just the process um, of the pitching. Um, so, but today we're going to have 10 pitches, okay? Um, note that the businesses that are pitching, please be ready. The judges are in the room and they will ask you a couple of questions straight after your pitch. Yeah. And so um, you, you have five minutes, three minutes of that is your recording, which you've already submitted. And then about two minutes for questions or anything like your motivation. All right, are we ready? Portia, are you ready? Can we have a drum roll? Okay, yeah. so without further delay, um, our top 10, we're going to announce the top 10 and then we're going to get into the pitches. So first up, and this is in no particular order, but first up we have Nelly Siwe Ndebele. Congratulations to you Yay. for being a finalist. Yes. yes, and the second one will have Lisibana Langa. Yeah, yes, Lisibana. <laughs> Third up we will have Pauline Matuisa. Okay, run it five. Then we'll have um, Nom Nomfundo Trele. That's right. Yes, Nomfundo. Next up, we will have Kwabane Mokonyane. Mokonyana, yes. sorry. Kwabane, yeah. Yes, and Koliswa Mokhapi. Hmm, That's yeah. right. We also have uh, Moiketsi Sesini. Yes, that's Known McDonald's. McDonald's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was good. Everyone gets confused because they know him as McDonald's. And then we've got Tabon Kosi. Congratulations. We also then have Simon Mokiti. Yes. And then we have, lastly, Lindo Guche and CD. All right, so those are our 10 finalists who have made it. Congratulations to all of you. Uh, what an exciting achievement. And again, um, as Owen said, everybody who submitted and who was brave enough to submit a pitch, congratulations to you. I'm so glad that we are not the judges in this process because I'm sure it was a very, very difficult process to narrow it down to just 10. But I think every single person who has been part of the program up to this point is already a winner just because of the amount of knowledge and experience that you've gained in the program. Yeah. All right. And so um, let's get into the pitch recordings. All right. So thank you to everyone who sent their pitch recordings. They were all great. And this was really difficult to exercise for the judges <laughs> to get to the top 10. So let's yeah. mute. We're going to ask everybody to please mute. And we will now listen to the top pitches. Please note that after the pitches, and feedback has been completed, the judges will go into a breakaway room, okay? They're going to then finalize the winners um, by order of the prizes we have mentioned. During this time, we're going to look at some highlights. We're still going to engage, so please don't leave the webinar. Um, we're going to do some pictures. We're going to have some testimonials. And also, guys, remember that the chat is open as always, so please feel free to comment in the chat. Let us know your experiences throughout the program. Um, we're going to engage with you a little bit later, but for now, um, we're going to move over to the pitches. Portia, I think you wanted to mention something or is that going to be a little bit later? I, yeah, I just wanted to check if all our judges are, in, are ready. Uh, Mike, are you ready? Um, Advocate Kala, Harold? Yeah, yeah. Yes, I'm ready. Okay, and Rasuna? Uh, 
I'm, I'm ready. Okay. Everybody's here. Awesome stuff. So without further delay, all microphones on mute, please. And we're going to get straight into our pitch videos. First up, we have Nelly Siwendebele's pitch. My name is Nelly Siwendebele and I am the founder of Kosen, a shoe design and manufacturing company in Sintukona, Etwatwa East in Davidson. It was in 2017 when my sister, Nompumelelo Mashangu, was going to an African traditional wedding. She wanted shoes that would match with her Isindebele outfit, but unfortunately no one was offering such services at the time. With a few hand tools from home, the same color fabric, I was able to redesign old shoes into a stylish, unique and matching pair for her. This is how Koseni was born. We are a brand in retail that specializes in providing a unique taste of the African culture through handmade, durable and custom designed shoes. We sell push-ins, sandals, open and closed flat shoes for women, men and children. We also have an option for you to redesign your old worn out shoes that you just cannot let go of. Our customers are inspired by the African fashion. They are looking for quality, stylish and unique designs. They are also parents who are looking for long lasting shoes that can still keep up with trends. Our customers are also individuals and businesses that are looking to manufacture and design their own footwear. We have spotted our competitors at Tembisa. They go by the name of Moko Originals. What makes us stand out from them is our quality of shoes and the African, African print material that we, we incorporate in our own design. We sell all of our products and services at our own flagship store located at 9577 Kutong Street, City Corner in Etwatwa East. We sell on social media which is Instagram, Facebook and WhatsApp. We also have been selling at various markets and events, that is your malls, schools and government exhibitions. We have been operating since November 2021 and have been generating a net profit of 31% through selling 12 pairs of shoes every month during the month of summer and spring and have been selling much lesser during the months of winter and autumn. This has made our product seasonal and our profit at break-even point. Our other revenue streams include reflexiology and accessories. This helps in establishing and maintaining a relationship with our customers. It is estimated that the South African footwear industry is worth 54.9 billion rands, with 70% of the shoes imported and 90% coming from China. This is because of the lack of factories and skill set in our country. Kosen is looking to launch a skills development program by working together with CETA to provide shoemaking learnerships and internships in our company. This will help us grow our production and increase our sales revenue by at least 61% by next year, June 2023. The prize money received from Asisa Foundation will help us get extra machinery and equipment for the project. It will also help us pay two months installment for further marketing our brand. Our other achievements include one flagship store located in City Corner, Etwato East, and a certificate in clothing manufacturing. Thank you. Beautiful, Nelly Siwe. Thank you so much. What a lovely presentation. Yeah. Um, okay, so do we have any of the judges that have a question for Nelly Siwe? Go for it, Mr. Mokoka. Uh, uh, hi. It's Harold. Oh, we've got Harold and Mr. Mokoka. So let's, let's start off with Harold and then we'll go to Mr. Mokoka. Great, awesome. Um, thank you very much for the presentation, Nelly. So just one question, I think, just, to, just so we are um, on the same page. You mentioned that the funding, if you would receive funding, you'd use it for, you mentioned two things. You said one is to purchase machinery and the second one you said is to pay installment for marketing. So this tells me that you have identified two needs, which is production and sales. Which of the two would you say is comes before the other? 
Hello everyone and thank you so much for your question. I would say that the first thing that I really do need is marketing the brand. I've been struggling with marketing my brand, but I have identified a company that can do that at a very cheap at a much cheaper cost. And in me marketing my brand further marketing my brand, I will get exposure and will be able to get more uh, more orders for my business. But in order to support the 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 orders, I need new machinery and equipment so that I can teach other people to make the shoes and it will help in the growth plan that I have for the next for next year. Thank you. All right, thank you. Mr. Mokoka, do you have a question? Y yes. Uh, hi, Nelisiwe. Uh, I, I just want to find, you said how many pairs do you sell a month? I sell... 12 pairs of shoes every month. I am able to make 12 pairs of shoes every month, but in a day I am able to I am able to do much more. I haven't been able to do more than 12 pairs because I have been working alone. Oh, so so you have the constraint is, is the production constraint, and from there you yeah. say you are, you make a uh, one percent of the which is your gross profit from this 12 pairs. Yes. So if I were if I, if I was able I, I am able to do more shoes but I'm only I have been only able to make only twelve shoes for every month for now. Okay. So what is your strategy for growth going forward? My strategy for okay. My strategy for growth is to teach people to people how to make shoes. That will be part of the uh, learnership and internship program that I'm planning to implement in my company, which I will be working together with CETA. And in, in doing so, those two people will, will be able to help me to grow my production because if I am able to make uh, one pair in three hours, we can make five pairs in one day. We can really grow our production and grow our sales. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Beautifully answered, Nelly Siwe. Thank you so much. And thank you to the judges for those questions. It seems like this is turning into an episode of Dragon's Den and it's going to get more and more difficult as we go. I think we can move on to our second. No, I think we have my hand up. We soon as got hand up. Okay. Um, I just wanted to ask a question. I wasn't clear on A, your value proposition. Like, what solution are you providing? in the market and also it's not clear who's your target market and what needs do you think this product fulfills to your target market okay thank you for that my value pro proposition is handmade durable and custom designed shoes my customers are people who are inspired by the African culture. That is because we use most clean material. And my customers are also parents and parents who need long lasting uh, shoes for their kids because they have a problem of children who, who don't have lasting shoes. They only last up until maybe three months or so. And my, my other customers are people who want to design Thank you, Nelisiwe. Portia, do you know if we have any other questions or are we good to proceed to the next presentation? Yeah, I think we can proceed. Um, so next up is Lisi Banalanga. Thank you. Everybody mute, please. Design is the silent ambassador to your brand. Hi, my name is Lisi Banalanga, founder and director of LCL Print. A design, print, and branding company. At LCL Print, we offer services such as silkscreen printing, heat transfer printing, embroidery, and large format printing. We pride ourselves in helping our customers' brand stand out, to be seen out there, to be recognized. We also make sure that our customers' brand is attractive and it attracts attention. Our customers range from individuals 
to small businesses to large businesses. Our competitors are small businesses like ourselves around our, in our around our township. What we what, what what we do to differentiate ourselves to stand out from our competitors is that we always, by any means necessary, put our customers first. That's that's our, our that's our main that's our main thing, our main goal that we always strive to achieve. We put our customers first. How we market ourselves is that we most of most of our marketing is on social media. We use social media to market ourselves. Most of our customers get our information from social media. We also we also have our, our previous customers they spread our spread the word of mouth because they see our products and services and they're happy with it. We offer quality products at affordable prices. Uh, the previous sales amount ranged from it was between eighty four thousand and ninety thousand. That was like the previous year only the total uh, net income for, 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 for the year annual. Our expenses are mostly is uh, transport costs, direct costs in uh, cost of sales and wages how we plan to grow is that we plan to make most of our products to be branded in-house as that's not the case currently uh, services such as embroidery and large format printing we, we actually at the moment do not have uh, the services in-house so we outsource it so that there are other people who do that we also plan to to start uh, supplying school uniforms as it is very expensive and I think there's no lack of competition there. If I win this grand prize, I plan to invest it back into the business. Thank you. Thank you, Lizzie Banner. All right, so we're gonna give we're gonna give an opportunity to two of the judges one more time to ask a question. Judges, if I could ask you to keep your question short. And we will only allow two questions per judge after each presentation, just so that we, we, we don't run into a challenge with time. Um, Lisebana, great presentation. My question Thanks. for you is, you said if you um, win this prize, you're going to invest it back to the business. Can you please elaborate how you would invest it back in the business? Oh, I have quite a few ideas, but um, I would like to, like, uh, promote my business out there, like uh, print out uh, banners, boards, and those kind of stuff. So I would use the money to cover those kind of costs for the business to be like, to be seen out there. Because my banners is old, so I need new banners. I need to, you know, yes. Okay, so you would use it for your marketing? Yes. All right, thank you. No further questions from me. Thank you. Do we have any questions from any of the other judges or are we able to proceed? Great, let's move on. Thank you. Let's go on to our next finalist. Um, finalist number three is Pauline Matuisa. Let's take it away. Everybody on mute, please. Matuisa from Ranfanteng. I am the founder and CEO of Ange Promotions and Entertainment. Ange Promotions is a digital marketing agency based in Johannesburg. We blend creativity and technology to help our clients transform and grow their brand. We pride ourselves in offering premium digital promotions, brand activations and promotional collateral. We have an experienced and dynamic team who are passionate about bringing clients' projects to life through innovative and targeted solutions. I now work with two partners in the company. Loazi and Sandile, who bring their vast experience in brand development and events management. Our exceptional understanding is aligned with our clients' needs and strategic objectives. We specialize in digital marketing, brand activations, and promotional collateral. Our clients range from small to micro businesses, government, corporates as well as enterprises who would like to launch their brands online on the industry. 
we involve our and our client centric approach is what makes us stand out of traditional and online channels these include but are not limited to digital media referrals word of mouth telesales and events networking events we we our monthly sales amount to 24000 our expenses are 16,800 rand and our net income is 7,200 rand. We plan to grow by investing in research and development as well as acquiring the necessary equipment in order to broaden our market, to also form mutually beneficial partnerships in order to have access to other networks in order to enlarge our footprint and enrich our experience. In the next five years, we, we would like to expand our offices across the country and the continent. If I win the prize money, I would invest it in acquiring promo, uh, production equipment such as a heat press machine for corporate gifts and wear. Thank you for your time. We've reached the end of my presentation. What a beautiful presentation indeed. Thank you so much, Pauline. Um, let's see if we do have any questions from any of our judges. Usha, if you can just let me know if any of the judges have indicated. Yes. <coughs> Hi. Please go ahead. Is Pauline here with us? Yes. Pauline? Hi, everyone. Hey there. Hello. Okay. Okay, just a quick question from my side. Um, I know you mentioned yourself as a digital agency. Uh, just maybe a brief rundown of the digital platforms that you use and how they help your clients. Okay, thank you for that question. Um, since so we are a, a digital marketing uh, agency, the platforms that we use are, are the website, social media platforms, um, word of mouth, as well as uh, networking events. And um, please repeat the, the last part. I, I didn't. Oh, okay. Oh, the, um, in terms of. question was how they, how these, how, how you use these platforms to help your clients. Well, I use these platforms um, to help clients in terms of information sharing and and also to to market clients to a broader audience as we all know that uh, social media is very powerful in 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 reaching a broader uh, audience and also building communities online thank you all right thank you thank you do we have any questions from any of our other judges yes i raised my hand please go ahead mr mokoka yeah, yeah. Uh, Pauline, how are you? I am well, thanks. And how are you, Mr. Mukoka? Thank you. I'm well, and thank you. Uh, Pauline, tell me, in this uh, digital marketing pr uh, promotions, what are your main cost drivers? The main the things that you can really say is, this is uh, my main cost of the business. Hello, did you okay. get me? Yes. Yes. Um... The, the, the main ones that I can think of on top of my head are the websites and subscriptions, monthly subscriptions. Those are like the main costs that I, 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 use, I get. Okay. And then how much is your gross? Do you, are you now making profit, any positive profit or... Uh, are you in a break-even point or where are you? Is the business really making a profit or in a break-even Well, I'm, I'm happy to say, um, since I, 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 I have engaged my coach, this is Poshia, um, when we started speaking, pricing was my issue, was my biggest issue. And now that um, I have a partners as well, um, in terms of the 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 the, the sales, I'm seeing a progress since even I started this program. It has actually helped me a lot. Like um, since August, I've, I'm seeing an increase in in sales, and 
the, the, the methods that we, uh, the method that we use for allocating funds is I'm seeing that it, it is actually working. So I am really happy about um, my progress so far. And I know that I can do better in the in next year. So thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Mokoka. And thank you to our judges. Beautiful presentation, Pauline. I think we can move on to our next one. Kosha. You ready? My name is Urufundwagatele from the beautiful city of Durban. I consider myself more as a businesswoman rather than just a fashion designer. I am the founder and owner of Zobu Kosi, which is a Durban-based clothing brand, so specializing in both bespoke and ready-to-wear women's clothing, targeting women between the ages of 25 to 40 years old. Zobu Kosi sells timeless fashion that remains relevant throughout all seasons. Our style is not influenced or focused on trends, but rather on timelessness, as Zobukosi is about expressing and celebrating one's identity. We are very passionate about the concept of Africanism and of African renaissance, and we always try to express this through our use of colors, textures, volumes, and sometimes to the use of sculptural silhouettes in our designs. We've identified brands such as Nude Collections, Apelele, Eula SA, and Root Couture as some of our competitors. Now, what we've noticed about these brands is that we actually share a similar business model and we share the same target market. But what makes us as the Wakosi to stand out is our Afrocentric view and expression of fashion, which is always reflected in our style, design, and content. Now, talking about content, social media plays a huge role in our uh, marketing strategy. Um, as Zobukosi is first a concept of identity before it is a brand. And this is what we're actually selling, the African identity. Now, with this in mind, we've actually committed ourselves to being a canvas of expression and of celebrating one's identity beyond just clothing, but also through storytelling, art, design, and interactive content on social media. Our monthly sales is usually around the 5K, 10K bracket, but as of recent, we've actually noticed a peak in our sales. This is due to the fact that we've recently introduced Ready to Wear, and we've also recently started exhibiting our products in market days around Durban. This is actually helping our sales a lot. Um, as I work from home, working from home means that um, our expected sales is actually below the expected because I currently do not pay for any utilities, but most of our expenses goes towards education, internet, and subscriptions for apps such as Canva that helps us with our content and our designs. Um, the dream or the goal for Zobukosi is to actually to become an online store and to have our own fashion studios. With the short term goal being um, that I actually want to move from working from home to having my own working space in a central environment like Durban CBD, where all my clients can have easy access um, and they can come anytime. Um, I'm hoping that as the new year begins, Zobukose actually also begins a new chapter in our new working space. Winning the grand prize would mean so much to me because this will help me towards paying for deposit for the new space and also to set up the new space because I definitely want to move to a working space as the new year begins. Thank you so much. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Nomfundo. Um, I know Nomfundo's typed a message saying her network is a little bit unstable. Nomfunda, can you let us know if you or if you are ready to take questions? Hi, Nomfunda. Darren. Um, I think yeah, right now my network is a bit better. Great. Any of the judges with a question, please fire away. Uh, hi, Nomfundo. Hi. Uh, Nomfundo, I yes, just no. want to. I just want the clarity on your on on your your. Uh, one, 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 one one of your main course drivers because you say that most of your course you say you work from home so you don't pay for utilities and what oh, well, no. but are you factoring them in as part of your production cost so that you can get uh, the exact how much is your business no. and the other thing is that you say that one of your main cost is uh, 
is, 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 is internet subscription and whatever. The material that you use, how do you source it? Isn't it most supposed to be one of your biggest costs? Thank you. But I got to say it. Um, um, oh, okay. Yeah. I did, um, when I, I mentioned that um, most of our cost uh, goes towards um, production, extraordinary cost uh, expenses goes towards the production. That's what I meant. I meant the materials, the raw materials that I needed there. Okay, all right. And, and okay. yes, and then with the suspicions, because uh, like I said on, 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 the, on the presentation, that um, another thing that we also push forward is having content that people can, can communicate with because it's a part of the brand as well. Oh, oh, oh okay. Yeah. All right. Can and we then go back? The yes. The, the first part was that because you work from home, so you don't have utilities to pay and whatever. So are you factoring them in in your business? Because uh, as business grows, sometimes the reality is that you're going to go and pay for utilities and rent and whatever. So are you factoring in to show that really how much is your profit? Because, well, because I don't I necessarily pay for the utilities. Um, I don't include that when I'm doing my expenses. So um, in that way, the money um, that should be going towards that, I do put it um, to help us, the family, but I don't regard that as part of the family, uh, the business expenses, if I'm making sense. Oh, oh, okay, for a word of advice, you must just take it and put it as part of your cost, not as going helping your family. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Nomfundo. Let's give an opportunity to any other of our judges who may have a question. Kosha, if you can see if any of the other judges have a question there. All right, looks like we have no further questions from our judges. Let's move on to our fifth presentation. Um, our fifth presentation is Kwabane Mokonyana. Take it away. Everybody, please mute yourselves. Hi, everyone. My name is uh, Kwabane Sole Mokonyana. I'm 34 years old. Um, I'm a full-time student. I'm currently studying Bucom Accounting, uh, measuring in co investment and corporate finance, and also accounting. I am the owner of uh, Sandwich Bite. Sandwich Bite um, is a restaurant established in 2020 uh, in Tembisa. We currently have um, sandwiches, burgers, uh, grills, and wraps on our menu, and we occasionally serve ice creams. Uh, we have a special uh, pega called Sexy Chubby Pega. Sexy Chubby Pega, it's uh, the most uh, loved pega in Tembisa, or you can make that uh, in Africa, because we recently had a customer all the way from Lagos, and the first thing that he told us he wanted to try was our Sexy Chubby Pega. It's a unique uh, pega, authentic if I may say because uh, we are the first one to, uh, to ever ever produce uh, such a pega called sexy chubby pega. Um, our product are um, mainly popular on the youth given that uh, they like taking uh, pictures with our food uh, so they make them vibey and vibrant. Um, we use uh, social media as a tool of marketing uh, we mainly use Instagram which is a very uh, good tool that has worked for us tremendously well in the past uh, years. Uh, our petitions, given that uh, in, in, in the bigger space, uh, we can go as high as uh, the popular known uh, brands such as Tears and McDonald's. We, we, we generate over uh, 30 to 40,000 in revenue, and then we have um, we have uh, expenses such as rent, uh, transport, inventory, salaries, and data. I would like us. Uh, I would like to see Sandwich Bite uh, being nationwide. I would like to see Sandwich Bite being popularly known. I would like to see Sandwich Bite as a strong brand in general, and I want to see Sandwich Bite known because uh, I want uh, everyone to know that. Uh, Sandwich Bite is there, the whole world. And I would like to conclude that uh, Sandwich Bite has learned a lot from Asisa Foundation. I individually have learned a lot from Asisa Foundation. I no longer look at uh, my, 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 my business income as my own income. I always cherish for the rest of my life. Thank you.
beautiful presentation there from Khabane. Um, I think you got us all feeling hungry now um, after seeing a picture of that sexy chubby burger. Let's see if there are any questions from any of our judges. Yes. <clears throat> Please go ahead. Khabane, are you here hi, and hi, can hi. you hear us? Yes, yes, uh, I can hear you guys. Great. Please go ahead. Perfect. Uh, um, I'm not sure if you were able to get to it in your presentation, but I didn't quite get it. What would you do or what would you say are your most immediate business needs should you stand the chance to win the grand prize? And also what's uh -huh. in this sexy Charlie Beggar? The ingredients step by step and slowly so I can write them down. Okay. Just okay. don't steal the recipe. I'll start. I'll start with the ingredients, okay. Um sexy chubby I'm burger. I'm playing with the ingredients. You playing? <laughs> yeah, I'm just joking. I don't wanna steal your thing, your secrets. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I can share. It's just that uh the, the the touch it's what makes it different. Do you so but I can share that. <laughs> so uh oh, yeah, no, I can't steal your touch. That's true. <laughs> okay, uh, given uh, the current affairs and challenges uh, we are faced with as, as a nation in low shading, I intend to invest in a four-in-one gas stove, uh, which will enable me to operate during low shading. Not only will that give me an edge over my competitors, this will also, give, uh, will also be a, a tool I can use to market myself in order to reach more customers and increase our sales. It's been the place that I operate during low shading. Uh, this stuff will also help us to now be mobile, meaning that uh, we can attend events, we can attend uh, festivals uh, with ease because uh, we won't now have to rely on electricity. If there's no, if there's no electricity, I have, I uh, guess, a uh, four-in-one stove, which uh, I can use all the time. So if I win the price money, that's what I intend to buy with the, with the price money. Thank you. Thank you. I see Mr. Mokoka's hand is raised as well. Mr. Mokoka, you can fire with your question. Hi, Kobani. Hi, Mr. Mokoka. Yes, I just want to find out because this food uh, industry is very competitive. So what what thing you will make you as a very successful in the business? If I'm an investor wanting to invest money in a business, just sell it for me. What will, uh, what, what will stand out for you? in this competitive market well yeah, you, yeah you're definitely right this is a very competitive market uh but um i i believe um our ways and means uh to 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 let the the people that we are out there we are continuously trying to be relevant in updating our 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 social media pages in letting people know that we are there so i think uh the best way for me to to uh, to, to have an edge over the competitors is for me to continuously market uh, myself and let people know that I'm there so that way we attract customers with that um, uh, with that uh, my, I think the best way is through marketing I think that's the only way we can uh, be able to have an edge over our customers other than the fact that our our food are original and our food are always prepared fresh thank you beautiful um I think you can introduce our next finalist. Hey, Koli Swamu Happy from Dig in Caterers. Hi, everyone. My Hi. name is Koli Swamu Happy. I am 28 years old from Carltonville in Gauteng. I am the owner of Dig in PTY LTD. Dig in was established in 2020 during the COVID 19 pandemic. Uh, Dig in is a catering company. We cater for events. That is your weddings, uh, your parties, your funerals, or office parties, etc. Uh, currently, we have been focusing on doing kids' lunch boxes. Uh, we do our lunch boxes on a daily basis, and our kids uh, they pay us on a monthly basis. We have a monthly fee. It will differ because uh, sometimes we will cut out the holidays. So from this month, it will be 500. And then from the following month, it will differ. For example, let's say it will be 400. Let's say if you have June holidays or your September holidays uh, and so forth. So, and then our lunch boxes are very special because when we make them, we make them very special. A child, when they receive our lunch box, they will feel that the lunch box is from their parents because we always make uh, our lovely notes 
you will see if a, a, a lunchbox for example is for morena we will say okay i love you morena from mom and dad or is from mom or dad uh, either way uh, have a good day uh, stay shining and so forth that's how we make our lunch boxes and we deliver them to schools daily to our kids and then while delivering uh, my lunch boxes my kids will be making will be asking me felicia how did you make this okay felicia is my other name felicia how did you make this how did you make this pancake oh that pizza was so nice and i was like okay these kids are onto something let me start to teach them how to bake and how to cook that's when i launched junior chefs uh, junior chefs uh, is starting from the age of three i teach them on how to bake and how to cook i saw that it was a need for kids uh, to have this skill because it will help them in future if they also want to have catering businesses if they will start from this young age or even if they want to teach uh, their their siblings it will be a very good thing or a very good skill to have we do have competition uh, from catering companies that have been around for years but uh, as dig in we saw that uh, when they are teaching people they teach them on a daily basis on quite high amounts it would be five thousand a month and for us it's only 150 and they pay us monthly beautiful presentation there by colisa Kulisa, that was lovely, lovely, lovely. Um, beautiful idea also of the lunch boxes. Do we have yeah. any questions from any of our judges, Portia? I'm checking. Yes, my my cook already. And then I think Harold also is. Harold, you can go. Let's just make sure Koliswa is around. Koliswa, are you here? Yes, I'm here. Perfect. Go ahead, Mr. Mokoka. Hi. Uh, hi, Koliswa. Uh, I, 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 Hi, didn't, I didn't hear you breaking down your finances in the business. How does uh, your catering business do and whatever? Are you making any profit? What are your challenges in real, in the finance? Oh, okay. Thank you, Mr. Mukoka, for your question. Uh, for like mainly, as I said, that we have been focusing mainly uh, on the kids' lunch boxes. So the kids, the kids' lunch boxes uh, per per meal is twenty two rand. So when they pay us monthly, I will just take uh, an amount of four thousand rand and buy groceries that would last for the whole month, and then we'll get a profit about seven to eight thousand that is left. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Uh, and once we are ten over, we do have that uh, eight thousand left. Yes, my that's the the profit is eight thousand rand. I mean the the total that you make in a month, that you end up ending with the eight thousand. Oh, I make around sixteen thousand. Then I will take uh, four thousand for the groceries, and then the rest will be for electricity and the packaging that you use for the kids' lunch boxes. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. I see we have a question from Advocate Carla as well. Please go ahead with your question. Hi, Kolisa. How are you? Fine, thanks. And how are you, man? I'm all thank you. Beautiful presentation. Well done. Um, please advise, how do you market your product? I go um, I, I go to schools like from our preschools or daycares and then I will uh, approach the principals and then tell them about the lunch boxes and this thing of uh, junior chefs because i also do it as an extramural activity whereby they will give me an hour in a school let's say on fridays or thursday in other schools so i just go to schools and give them pamphlets and I also advertise on also on social media oh beautiful okay thank you yes thank you great do we have any other questions or can we proceed to our next um yes our next finalist we have just one more question. Um, Go for it. Just uh, the question around what you do with funding. I don't think that was covered. So based on your okay. current business, what would you do with the funding? 
if you had if you were to win it. Okay, if I were to win, say, uh, the only challenge that I have right now uh, is to get uh, more tables for my junior chefs because I've got kids uh, from the age of three, so some of them are short for my foldable tables. And I also need more utensils for baking, and I also need a, an affordable scooter that will help me deliver uh, lunch boxes to more schools so that I can be able to approach more schools for the upcoming year. Thank you. Thank you so much, Koliswa. Let's move on to our participant number six or finalist number six, McDonald Moiketi Sesinye. Let everybody mute, please. Hey, my name is Moiketi McDonald Sesinye. I'm the founder and director of McDonald Duncan Promotions. McDonald Duncan Promotions is a design and business consulting agency which offers graphic design, web development, and business consulting services such as CRPC company registrations, annual return filing, as well as director changes amongst other services. At the beginning of the business, I was working with people who wanted to start their own businesses, but the only thing that they had was a business idea. So I would help those people register their businesses and get all the necessary, no necessary documentation required to kickstart their businesses. Now I realized that our competition at that time was offering the same services that we were offering in the very same way that we were doing and it was very tedious. So I realized that I had to come up with a strategy that was, that was going to help us stand out from the crowd and become unique. And that is how our graphic design and web development services were introduced. Because not only could we get you all that compliance document that you need for your business, but we could also create a brand image for you. You could get a professional designed logo, letterheads, business card designs, company profiles, as well as a good professionally designed and developed website. Now, because we are an online company, we are focused in marketing our business online, that is on your Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, as well as on Google Ads. But then we realized that marketing online only meant that we were missing out on an opportunity of reaching or accessing those people that were, on, that were not online. So that is how we went back also to the traditional way of marketing, which is printing a flyer, going to different locations and handing, handing them out to people. And that worked out well for us because those people that were not online contributed to about 10 to 15% of our total revenue ranges or fluctuates between 9,000 rands to 12,000 rands per month. About 40 to 60 percent, um, about 40 to 60 percent goes towards our operational expenses, which is your electricity, your Wi-Fi. Because obviously, we are design and online company. We definitely need that Wi-Fi to be online, and the rest of um, the operational expenses goes um, um, towards um, maintaining our printing equipment um, that we use for our documentation, maintaining our computers because we use them to design. And from the total revenue, about 40 to about um, 30 to 50 percent then becomes our profit, depending on how we give that particular month, because we don't have um, one figure to say we make 10,000 rands every month, so it fluctuates. If I win this competition, I'm going to use the prize money to buy printing equipment. And that is part of our growth strategy because um, this means that not only can we design a business card for you, but we can also print them out for you. Not only can we design a flyer for you, but we can also print that for you. And that is going to grow our business in a very massive way. Thank you, appreciate your time. Thank you. Well done, McDonald. Da, 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 da. I'm loving it. Beautiful day. Let's, <laughs> Thank you. Let's jump into questions from our judges hi harold here hello yeah i'm yeah. here hi Miguel. um just a quick question you mentioned that in your current business you do have um printing right so when you say you're going to use you would use the funding for more printing machines so is there a difference between the current machines that you have and the ones that you want uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, we, what we have right now is a standard printer that we use for our uh, documentation within the company. So what we want to do, for, exa for an example, if, if we want to print business cards, we would need to use a different printer. And then part of the printing equipment um, would include, for instance, on the business card, um, we would need a, pr um, a business card uh, cutter, meaning we would print via a printer. And then once we have that printed documents, we then move to 
cutting them using a business cutter. So what we have now uh, would not suffice to to print uh, some of the work that we want to print because uh, most of our clients um, um, always want uh, what they call glossy flyers, which we cannot print with our current printer. So glossy flyers would be those shiny paper uh, type of a paper. So uh, what we have now only allows for the normal um, printing paper. So when we get this prize money, we'll then invest in that business card cutter and um, a standard printer that can allow to print some um, um, papers for business card purposes as well as flyers as well. Thank you so much there. Um, Thank you. Next question we've got is from Mr. Mokoka. Go ahead, sir. Hi, Mokesi. Hi, Mr. Mokoka. How are you? Yes. I just want to know, because now we are moving more and more into a digital age. So, yes. uh, uh, but I hear you want to invest more into actual printing. Yes. And then uh, actually on your printing side, which one is more of your, when you get this equipment, will be as you need the target market that really need, still need this uh, uh, paper and whatever, because more business are going into the digital, which is more yeah. cost effective. Yeah, absolutely. That's what I thought too. And when I was discussing with Miss Portia during the, the coachings, I said to her that um, because we are a social, um, a digital agency, um, we were focused more in advertising online and that worked for us for a couple of years. But over the years, we realized that we were then missing out on those people that are not online. So although we are moving towards um, a digital era, um, there are also those uh, people that are really not online as yet. And we want to take, um, you know, an advantage of that so that they can also become our clients. So we work with small businesses, as I mentioned on the presentation, that would come with only a business idea. So even after we've registered businesses for them, we would also still need to print out documents for them. Uh, for an instance, let me make an example with some of the key uh, documents of a company. So let's say we're talking about the registration certificate, a BE certificate, a share certificate. We would need to print those for them and also laminate for them. So although there's also the digital part, but some clients prefer to have physical documentation. So I've had problems with clients before saying, um, where, how do I get original hard copy documents after you've registered a business for me? Because they think maybe you are cheating them if you only send them to a send those documents to them via email. So part of the printing means that we can also um, um, build some so some form of assurance in printing physical documents and either courier, couriering them to clients or, or them picking them up in our, in our office. Um, so um, although we're also moving towards the digital space, I still believe that there's quite a huge number of people in the country that are still not online as yet. And we want to take a look. Thank you. I think I've answered on that. And on the digital space, a short one, which which really is your targeted focused area in the market? Uh, please say that again. In in your digital space, like yes. uh, which which uh, as an uh, a promotion in and a digital graphic designer, which specific industries that you say these are my targeted market. Okay, so uh, we work with corporate companies that, for instance, one of my largest clients is um, a company that does PR work. So this is a person who um, sources out um, interviews from TV and radio television, um, from radio stations as well, um, in, in the form of a marketing for his clients. So that cu that customer comes to me and says, um, can you design uh, um, artworks or posters for my clients so that they can advertise to say, I'm going to be in this radio station at a certain time. So our target market is corporate companies that need artworks, that need websites, that need um, most of the, most of the services that we we offer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Moiketsi McDonald. Beautiful presentation. Um, great how you answered that question. Portia, who do we have next? Let's all mute and get into Tabo's video. While we're waiting for Tabo's video to. Um, to get started just remember the chat is open guys so you're welcome to post your congratulations comments in the chat as well for our participants as or the finalists as their videos play um let's see if we're ready for tabo's video everybody on mute uh, morning guys my name is tabo Ngozi from pumalanga i run a small spaza shop registered as jt trading in my business, I sell basic household goods and my customers are mainly primary school 
children between the ages of 8 to 11 and primary school teachers because the shop is located next to a primary school. In terms of competitors, I only have one competitor and the reason I stand out is because I offer more products and services than my competitor. In terms of marketing, I use word of mouth to market my business and I strategically use pricing also to market my business. What my business now needs now in order to be successful is that I need to add more products and also identify new revenue streams. In terms of sales, my sales are between seven to eight thousand rands a month and my expenses are between thousand rands a month and my profit is around 500 to 800 rands a month. If I win the 10,000 rands, I'm going to buy arcade gaming machines for the children in order to increase revenue for the business. My short-term goals currently are to add a butchery for my Spaza shop I recently got funded by the NYTA in order to purchase a machinery for my butchery. And lastly, my long-term goals are to register as a supplier and supply my local schools with office equipment, cleaning materials, and other school supplies. Thank you. Thank you, Tawa. Beautiful presentation there. Let's go to our judges and see if we have any questions from any of our judges. Uh, Advocate Carla, you can go for it first. Tabo, if you Hi, could just Tabo, confirm that you are here. Uh, morning, Advocate. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Great presentation. Well done, Tabo. Thank you very much. Sir. Um, When talking about how you market your business, you said you use word of mouth. Yes. What are your plans going forward to market it? Do you intend uh, to stick to word of mouth? Uh, since... Uh, I live in a community that's mainly rural. Uh, the best option right now is mainly word of mouth and, 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 and loyal customers that support me. Do we have any questions from any of our other judges? Uh, just a point of clarity. Um, just want to make sure that we heard correctly. You said if you want the grand prize, you'd use it to buy a gaming machine. Yes. Okay. Let's, let's take a question from Risuna and then we'll come to Mr. Makoka after that. Risuna, you can go with your question. Yes, I just wanted to ask a question. It wasn't clear to me as to how he markets his business. Oh, all right. In terms of marketing, I, I only use, currently I only use word of mouth and I only uh, use the way I price my products. I also check with my competitors uh, their product, how they price in terms of pricing, then I uh, identify how can I uh, price my product when I, uh, so that I can attract more customers. I use strategically use pricing and I use word of mouth. And also uh, I just get support from the loyal, the loyal customers that always buy for, for me. And where do you sell from? Where is uh, your right shop located here? Yeah? No, oh, it's at home right now. At home? Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Tabo. Mr. Bokoka, do you still have a question? Yes. Uh, Please Tabo, go ahead. Uh, you said that, uh, how much did you say that uh, is your, uh, your, your turnover, your, your monthly sales? How much do you make? My monthly, my monthly sales are between seven to 8,000 rand a month. And you said that your profit come to Eight eight hundred. Yes, eight hundred to a thousand rand a month. A thousand rand a month. Uh, yes. what, what are you gonna do to because you are working from home and what, what is more that is eating on your your profit because your profit is too low in relation to your turnover. So what is the strategy going forward of uh, making sure that uh, is is your uh, did you ever check your pricing whether because. Uh, Thousand to eight hundred. I don't think will survive long. What, what is your, your your way forward now, increasing your profitability? 
All right, uh, my plan to increase profitability uh, mainly is to make sure that I add the, the gaming machine for children so that I can increase revenue and also to to ad- identify other revenue streams that I can use to to increase the revenue for the business and also to identify new products. So I started doing a, a little survey with the customers so that I can get their inputs on where uh, which product I can add uh, on the Spaza shop so that uh, the main the main point of this is to to add more product and increase revenue. Okay, Tabo. Uh, my advice to you, Tabo, is now you have a business that is doing about ten thousand or uh, in in ten over. Uh, now, before even uh, 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 you must try to get your profitability to go up a bit, because on what you are doing, before you add something, just get that cost that cost that profitability to raise a bit, because there might be something that maybe pricing or whatever is not good. Thank you. All right. Thanks very much. Uh, Advocate Kala, do you want to say something? Are you asking a question? Yes, just one last question. Um, Tabo, I, I, can you please just go deep into your very proposition? What makes you stand out? What makes you, why, why should people come to you? Or why are they coming to you? OK. Uh, OK, the reason. Uh, why people come to me and why they should come to me is that uh, the nearest town or place that people can go to and shop it's around 35 to 45 kilometers away from where we live so uh, i make sure that i i go to the town every month and and stock up all all uh, some of the products that i can sell to the customers and bring them uh, to the location where uh, to the location where I stay so that they can assess them more easily than going to town and spending uh, 50 rand to 100 rand going to town and coming back. I yeah. hope I answered the question. Yes, yes thank, you. I'm answered. thank you. Thank you so much. Let's move on to finalist number nine, Simon Hi. Mokiti. Good day, my name is Simon Mokiti. I'm 33 years of age. I'm residing in Pumalanga. I'm in poultry business and my business name is My Sela Poultry Farming. We buy day old chickens. We grow them within a period of four weeks and we start selling by the uh, week, week five. My customers are people in community. I also have contract with two street vendors which I supply for a period of uh, three years. I'm in competition with farmers who do a uh, poultry business, same as I do, which they also grow uh, chickens and sell them. So I'm in competition with them. And I stand out from the com- competitors because my chickens look fresh and fat. Unlike my competitors, they come to me because my place look clean and my price are reasonable. My marketing strategy is word of mouth and I'm also in social media which is uh, Facebook and WhatsApp and they also call, call me on my cell phone to make orders and if they want to check if the chickens are available or not. I make 400 sales a month which is 30,000 and 360 a year. My expenses are 15,000 per month and 18,000 rents a year by profit of 45,000 per month and 90,000 per year. My plan to grow my business, I, I want to buy a hatching machines and build a, a hatching houses to produce uh, chickens and also buy farm to produce uh, feed for, for my chickens. I'm also looking to secure two contracts with uh, big retail stores like ShopRite and Boxer to supply them with the chicken by the coming year of 2023. Thank you. Thank you so much, Simon. Beautiful presentation again there. I do see Simon is in the room and he is unmuted, so we can move straight into questions from our judges. Advocate Carla, I see your hand. You can go ahead first. 
Um, Simon, great presentation, well done. Thank you. Please advise, what's, what's your plan? Should you win the prize, what, what are you going to do with it? Or maybe I missed it, you mentioned it, I just didn't get it. Yeah, okay, thank you uh, so much, Carla. Okay, uh, firstly, I'll need to invest more into the, the, the HE machine. That's the, that's the first priority because I need to, to produce my, my own old chicks because I now stock them. So if I win this prize, I'll need to, 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 to produce my, my own day old chicks. So for, for my business, of course. And then that's my first priority. The second priority, of course, uh, is uh, to get a farm where I'll, I'll produce my, my own feed. And another another priority is to secure a two contract. That's my three priority that if I win this price, I'll work on them. Thank you. Thank you so much, Simon. Next up, let's take a question from um, Harold first, and then we'll come to Mr. Mike Mokoka after that. Harold Molepe, you can go, sir. Great, thank you. Um, just, uh, just so we're clear. So, you, in your business, you currently buy hatchlings. No, no, I don't buy buy. Yeah, I buy uh, day old chickens. Okay, so they've already hatched, and what you want to do yeah, is buy yeah. a machine that allows you to grow, to grow the chickens from eggs. Correct. Yes. All right. Good. Cool. I, I, I didn't quite get that. My question is around your financials. I didn't quite get the breakdown. You said you, I'm not sure if you said you make 400 a day or if you said you sell 400 chickens. Oh, okay. Are you able to just break down those financials again for us? Okay. Okay. Because I now have uh, two houses, right? And those two houses, they occupy uh, 200 chickens each. So, which means every month i have uh 400 chickens right and then okay. per chicken i sell for 75 friends price right and so i'll do uh, 400 times 75 per month so you you sell out all those chickens every month yes every month i i do sell them yes i'm like it like at the end of the month your two houses are completely empty and you have to go to buy more chickens or uh, that, that's correct. Every month, my two houses are are, are, are empty. That that's happened. Oh. That's happened every month because in this area, there's a shortage of of, uh, of chickens. So actually, that's for sure. Every month, those chickens they all out. All right. So from the thirty thousand rand per month, you said your expenses are eighteen thousand. Am I correct? Yes, that's correct. Oh, okay. All right. Great. Thank you. Okay, thank, you. thank you so much. Final question, Mr. Makoka. Uh, uh, hi, Simon. Hi, Mr. Uh, Makoka. Uh, nice presentation. I love farming. But, uh, thank you. <laughs> uh, we need more of you. Uh, so I just don't get it uh, when you're on your rotation of chicken. Okay. Because if you say you sell all 4,000 a month and okay. your, your circle to get them ready to the market is four weeks, then you will have some gaps during other months because they will still be growing because you buy a day old. So can you please explain me your rotation strategy, your, your scheduling of uh, production? Because you've got two houses, but yes. you say you sell all of them a month. And yes. also one of the things is that I know chicken is a very uh, intensive farming kind of an operation. And it's yes. a miracle in a poultry farming there you don't have a... Uh, a mortality, the loss by death. Right, how yes. is your mortality rate of those chickens? And then also, how do you schedule that production of yours to arrive that uh, so that you don't have? Because according to how you put it uh, now, the answer, you'll have some gaps between other months where you don't have, they're still growing. All right. Uh, thanks for the question, Mr. Mokoka. Okay, I work them this way, right? I have uh, two houses which carries 400 chicks, right? So this is this is, this is is how I, I work them, Mr. Mukoka. Every week, every week within uh, the month, I, I stock 100 each week. So each week I get 100 chicks, right? Okay. So every every week, if, if, if I, 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 I now sell and then the, 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 
the other the other the other hundred is growing so if that hundred go out then the other hundred is ready and then i stock which means like i stock every week every week i stock 100 chicks so that's how they rotate okay thanks yes thank you very much thank um, you our final finalist, uh, where is it? Finalist number 10, Lindo Kuthe MCB. Take it away. Everybody, please mute your microphones. The founder and the managing director of the company called The Chicken Chatao. The Chicken Chatao was born in 2018. We currently specialize in hatching, growing, and selling broilers. My competitors are mesmerized eggs and the chicken farm. I stand out from my competitors by focusing on reviews so we can provide stellar customer service. We run specials on odd holidays and we run customer loyalty programs. My customers are currently Chisa Nyamas and individuals who stop to resell and we currently got a contract of sub supplying for pick and pay and shop right. Our vision is to provide local product at highest levels of specifications, standards and quality. Our mission is to be pioneer in the poultry industry through the continued development to get both our customer satisfaction and our employees. The business makes sales once after three months and the expenses are currently rent, electricity, feeds, medication, salaries and petrol for generators when there's load shedding. And the business does make profits, which is 75% of what we spend on our production. And what does that mean? That the business is growing, right? Okay. And then we market our business on social media, such as Facebook and WhatsApp. And we're planning on growing and expanding our marketing by having a small team that we go in various locations on weekends to distribute flyers and stickers. And I'm planning to grow my business by having a raw hatching and growing rocks and then have layers so that the company will sell the eggs too and then if I win this prize I will stock and hatch and grow so that I will be able to provide for the new contract that we recently got for supplying shop rights and pick and pay thank you logically your best choice thank you Beautiful. Thank you so much, Linda Kushle. Beautiful presentation there. Let's get some questions from our judges. Um, judges, if we can see who has a question. Uh, Harold Molepo, you can go ahead, sir. Great, thank you. Um, just a quick question around what you said you do use the grand prize for. Could you say hedge, grow, and sell? So I'm not sure what exactly that entails. Okay, um, thank you for your question. So, um, as I mentioned that we recently got a contract uh, to sub supply for pick and pay and shop right, meaning that it's a higher demand um, that the company has to meet. So, and we have now, from now on going forward, we are planning to at least hedge every after two weeks so that we will be able to meet that demand. And by looking at the budget that the company currently has, we are unable to do that. So the, uh, this price will add on that money to stock so that we are able to hedge every after two weeks and meet this demand to supply um, pick and pay and shop right. And also so that we don't fail also the small companies that we are currently working with. Because if we take the large, the large number of the chickens to pick and pay and shop right, it means we will start uh, failing our small businesses that which are the individuals that stock to Risa and um, the Chisanyamas. So our plan is to make sure that we retain all our customers. So this price will assist us on that. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lindo Kutle. Let's move on to uh, Risuna. You can ask your question. Okay, great. I just wanted to make, I just have two questions. The one question was around um, the fact that she mentioned that she's, she wants to hire some promoters for marketing where does the capital come from and, and what will the impact on her profits be should she hire more people because she mentioned that she wants to supply people like shop rights and all of that and are there any quality controls in place and what is the impact of the budget 
Okay, thank you. Um, thank you so much for your question. Um, firstly, to answer the one of the small team that will distribute the flyers. The people who will be doing that for me are my siblings. So currently, I don't think they're expecting anything as they know that their sister is doing everything to make sure that they are okay and the business is still not doing okay when it comes to that promotion part. It's my siblings and I'm the one who will be transporting them. I think the only thing that will currently cost us is only the petrol to move around those various um, uh, locations. And I can use money from my pocket to do that as I don't think it will be wise to take from the business since we have this huge um, contract that we are currently uh, working on. And then can you please, um, ask me another question that you asked before. I think I forgot it while answering this one. So I assume that she's asking me about um, the quality control and quality assurance based on my product. And the very same people that are supplying me with the eggs um, to, to, to hedge, uh, they are experts when it comes to controlling the quality. They help me with candling to make sure that uh, the the eggs are going appropriate and there's there is medication that you spray on your eggs every after seven days to make sure that they are okay and there's also medication that you give to your chickens um while they are growing to also make sure that the product is quality and standard thank you linda Kutle. thank you so much for how you handled it finalist number 11 Porsche Mklongo. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Posham Fungo and I, yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Wonderful pitches, guys. It was a very tough, tough decision to get to this 10. Uh, you guys did very well. And I think we must just give these guys a round of applause. Beautiful. Well done, everybody. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Um, and I, I just love that these businesses are running. They, they, these are not ideas. They are here. They, every day they're hustling. Yeah, so very, very, very excited. So I'm just going to ask my judges. Um, they need to deliberate now. So can you please go into a breakaway room, just judges? And then I think Owen, you'll join them too. Um, and then we are going to now um, <clears throat> move to the next uh, session. Sure. So all of the judges, if you could click on breakout rooms and please move to the breakout rooms, you will be back with us once you have made your decision. But for now, it is an absolute pleasure and a privilege for us to welcome a really special guest who's joined the webinar. I know she had a couple of other meetings and she's moved things around to be with us today on this special occasion. And so without further delay, let's welcome Mrs. Ruth Benjamin Swells, the CEO of the Asisa Foundation, looking lovely as always, um, to say a few words. Ruth, thank you for joining us. Please take it away. Thank you, Darren. And you are looking so dashing with your bow tie and your suit. It's a it's special event. You in another outfit <laughs> and always Porsche, always looking so stunning. So <laughs> to everybody on this webinar, I just want to say a huge heartfelt congratulations and well done. You know, this has been a pilot program for us at the CESA Foundation. And our aspiration for every one of our programs is that what we do will have impact. Impact on the participants and not just the participant, but on all those under their sphere of influence. And from the little that I heard today, and I'm so sorry that I had to miss so many of the presentations, but it's recorded, so I will definitely be listening. And I'm sure the judges are having a tough time from what I can hear in terms of making their final decisions. But to everybody else on this webinar who has been a part of this amazing program, all the way through from those who conceptualized it within the CESA Foundation, um, we have an amazing team. Um, to those who funded the program and those who implemented the program from, from Driven and, and, and the ASISA team. Um, we want to thank the ECIC as the key funder of this program for making it possible and for joining us today. And then for those of you who have facilitated the sessions, implemented the content, but making sure that it's relevant all the time, tweaking it, um, I've listened into every single webinar thus far, and I have been so impressed with the commitment of each person who participated from the facilitator's perspective. 
you've been given tools you know our facilitators have been excellent in highlighting the risks but also the opportunities and uh, you guys are a special group of people because you've already taken a very bold stand to do what is probably one of the most difficult things and that is to be an entrepreneur who never sleeps to make the business work and all we can do is wish you every success um, so thank you again for all your for all your engagement all the best and thank you thank you Ruth that was such such beautiful words and so inspirational as always we see why you are the CEO of the foundation and we know that your heart goes into all of these programs and as always we are so so um so so honored by your presence on this webinar today guys so what we're going to do now we know that the judges are still in the breakout room deliberating and deciding on who is going to be the winner but we have prepared some great highlights um just of the program and just showcasing some of the other businesses as well and so we're going to allow that to play please do not leave the webinar we are nearly done a few more minutes and then we'll end off but in the meantime please would you continue typing in the chat and letting us know yeah. your thoughts and what you felt about this whole entire program all these comments are going to be saved and shared um, on various platforms and it helps also just to make the program better and to give feedback to the everybody that's been involved in this program so we can keep our mics on mute and the video will play Yes, those are our businesses, guys. I think it's so we've amazing to see and just a lot variety of, here, of businesses. Right? Yeah. yeah. And we just bought that van a few weeks ago. <laughs> Beautiful products from Pilo. Oh, I like what Nelly is saying. This was the most well-organized program I've ever been in. Wow. Beautiful. Um, yes, I'm a shout out for some of the presentations saying well prepared and sound presentations by the finalists. Big thank you to the Assisa Foundation for the meaningful impact they make for all beneficiaries all the time. Thank you so much for that comment from Mbosilong. Sivana says, I loved the engagements and coaching. This has been really important for my business. Thanks, Assista Foundation. One year by McDonald's saying this was a beautiful and impactful program. Thank you so much for selecting us from such a large number of applicants. Truly appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. And, and I, I mean, I, I think it's because uh, <laughs> the selection, we're very strict, guys. And I think that's why we see this quality type uh, of businesses that we have in the program. Um, it was really not easy. Uh, Great stuff. And then guys, please, as you are saying, uh, you love the engagement and coaching. We still continue with the one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions, even after this. So it, this is not a goodbye. Okay, this is just the last webinar, but we're still doing our coaching sessions. Yeah. I think it is so beautiful to see how today, even though it was pictures, I think we learned so much. I mean, I certainly learned so much about various businesses. You know, sometimes as an entrepreneur, you focus on the business that you do and you don't even know what other people do. And so I think today we really learned so much. I didn't know about chicken farming and that whole process of hatching eggs and selling eggs. And so beautiful, beautiful um, presentations by our finalists today. Thank you very much. Um, as part of ECIC, I'm really glad that we were able to fund this program and it has been a good year for us to have partnered with ASISA. And if I may just say so, it is not the first time that we have partnered with them. And we have noticed the impact, the great impact that they are doing for all the beneficiaries. And we've had an opportunity to see other videos other than this one. So we are really proud and I think even our management would be proud to see this video and eventually get to see who is the finalist at the end of it all. Great work. We appreciate you, Assisa Foundation. Thank you very much. Thanks, Osmanana. Beautiful words there. Portia, you're on mute. If you can unmute yourself, please. Yes, I am. Yeah, I think the, the, the I don't know if the judges are back. Judges, are you back? Yeah, I think there's other chats there, new chats. Um, 
I see Silwane. Uh, say thank you, Asisa. I appreciate and value the insights, the time and help you gave me. I really learned a lot and congratulations to all the finalists. Thank you so much, Silwane. Thank you, thank you. Do we have feedback yet from our yeah, judges? We need Owen. Yeah, we need Owen to come and just announce the winners. All right, let's welcome back um, Mr. Owen from Driven. He's going to do the final announcement of the winners. Please don't do a Steve Harvey at the Miss Universe pageant where you announce the wrong winner, Owen. You know, once those, once that name is out of your lips, that's it, all right? So I, I, I hope you got the correct envelope, the correct name, the correct pronunciation. Yeah. We know there's a lot at stake here. And so as Portia and I both said, we are so glad this is not our responsibility, but over to you. Okay, um, can you hear me okay? Yes, we can. Okay, cool. Um, so yeah, I, it wasn't an easy process to get to this point, but I think what's important for, for me is to firstly just really hammer down on what exactly was being uh, looked, at, looked at. So to get to the top 10, uh, I think I did um, announce earlier that we had about 21 submissions that came through. And from these 21 submissions, we had to look at 50% weighting, which is engagement, it included attendance, and also women attendance, coaching attendance, and everything else. So I think that speaks to um, how we got to the to the final um, uh, top top ten. Uh, but to, on this final uh, selection, the judges were looking at uh, again different uh, elements, which included uh, clear articulation of value proposition, clear articulation of finances, clear articulation of um, marketing strategies. And actually articulation on how the funding was going to be used once, once it was received. So I won't take too much of time. I'm going to first announce um, our, our winners starting from uh, number 10 to number 10 to uh, 6. Then I'll finish off with uh, numbers um, 5 to, uh, to 1. So sitting from number 10 to 6, I'm just going to announce the names of uh, Sibana Langa, well done. You are sitting at uh, finalist number 10, followed by Pauline, uh, sitting at number 9. Also followed by uh, Tabo, Tabo Nkosi, uh, sitting at number 8. And then we've got Simon Wakiti, sitting at number 7. And then Nosundo Tele, sitting at number 6. Uh, so I think we can give a well done to our top uh, runner ups, which is uh, Sibana, Pauline, Tabo. Simon Nomfundo. Um, now we're going to look at our top, our top five. Uh, and again, I'm going to start off with uh, numbers uh, five to number number one. Um, we've got Lindo Shulum, Lindo Shulum CV, sitting at uh, number five. We've got Koliswa Mahasi sitting at number four. And then we've got Melisiwe Debebe sitting at number three. Now I talk to you with Wabane. It was a very hard. Uh, Discussion, but this is our top top uh, ten uh, from our twenty-one submissions. Thank you. So the winner is Moikes McDonald. McDonald is our winner. Thank you very much. Let's give a big round of applause to Moiketi Sesini, also known as McDonald. You are the winner. Congratulations to you. Well done, well done. We absolutely celebrate you. Let's everybody give some round of applause to McDonald um, for, for taking the grand prize. Yes, McDonald. <laughs> well done, no! well done. Well done, well done. Thank well you done. so much. Well That's done, McDonald. <laughs> you can turn your video on McDonald and you can just wave and give us a quick hello so that we can all see you. Okay, let me just do that quickly. Can How you are you all feeling? See yes, we can. How are you feeling? 30 I'm, seconds. I'm feeling great. I'm feeling great. Um, yeah, I, I'm even speechless. I usually talk a lot, but now I'm speechless. <laughs> Beautiful. Well, congratulations and very Thank well you, deserved. We celebrate you and we, we, we hope and pray that your business really, really just continues to go from strength to strength and Thank that you will apply all of the knowledge that you learned in this program. Well deserved Absolutely. win. And congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we are a little bit over time and so we are just quickly going to get the vote of thanks 
from the programs manager of the Asisa Foundation, Mr. Ivor Simang. If you could come on and say your final vote of thank vote of thanks for us, please. Um, firstly, I just want to thank the participants, and I think it has been such a testament to see participants committing um, time away from their businesses and actually enriching their skill sets all in with the aim of improving their businesses. And for us at ASISA, I think when we conceptualized this program, we really looked at the challenges that young people were facing. And one of the biggest things that we wanted to do was not to only focus on knowledge transfer, but to also start looking at the behaviors that will create a more sustainable business. Coming out of today, I think it's a testament of many things that have come together. The first thing was, the level of confidence that we've seen being showed by our participants today, I think that pales to the picture we saw when we started with the program. And that really talks to the growth that they've gone through in their learning journeys. Um, and then again, I wanted to thank them for staying the course. And I know that um, you know, there's a lot of challenges that they're facing in terms of their time and also being able to generate revenue. But I really do thank them for taking the program to heart and actually um, not just doing what they needed to do, but also seeing some of the, the, the community that's actually developed um, out of this group and, and, and how close they are. And that for me is important because we all know that um, business is a very lonely type of thing and everyone kind of lives in their head as a business person. To actually have a community of others um, who are able to share, I think that's great. But also to thank the Driven team, I think We've come a long way in terms of looking at how to put this together. And I think today is really a huge milestone for all of us. And I think we should all be thankful and um, and really praise today in that, you know, we, 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 we took two approaches and we've made it into one powerful offering. And it wouldn't have happened without, you know, your Owen, your Harry, your Porsche, um, you know, your Noble Pila and all the others, your, your Chantal with the social media side. It's all come together. Your Darren being the backbone in terms of our facilitation. So I really want to say a huge thank you to the team. A big thank you to our m and &E team who are in the background collecting the data that will hopefully, you know, give us a good account of how the program has, has fed up until now. But without the collaborations of um, ASISA a Foundation with ECIC, I think this program would not have been a reality. So I really do want to thank Manana and, and all the ECIC representatives on the call for having faith in us for the second year running and for, 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 for looking at ways of how we can reduce some of the socioeconomical issues that young people are facing. And I think this pilot has really given us a window in terms of the, the appetite that is out there for such a program and also the impact that such a program can have on, on our younger adults. So I really wanted to say a huge thank you for that and that's it from me. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mr. Ivan Simang, Programs Manager from the Asisa Foundation. Beautiful words of thanks and as always, it's an absolute pleasure for all of us to work with you um, and we thank you for your involvement in making the program a success as well. Kosha, that brings us to the end of the webinar um, yeah. and the end of an amazing series. Do you want to recap yeah. on anything? Yeah, I just want to recap maybe on the prizes. Um, yeah, and then I would, you know, as a tradition, my favorite part, taking the pictures. So you're going to have to do that, open our cameras and uh, do that, yeah. So from 6th to 10th place, we'll receive 500 rand and it will go into your bank account. Uh, and then we've got fifth place, we'll receive 1,500. And then we've got fourth place, we'll receive 3,000 rand. We've got third place, you'll receive 5,500. Second place, we'll receive 7,500. And the overall winner will receive a 10,000 rand. So guys, we are going to uh, contact you with regard to this. Um, yeah, because uh, there's ways how we're going to disperse these funds. So please, please, please uh, wait for our communication. That's in tomorrow. Thank you. Beautiful. Well, that brings us to the end of what has been nothing short of an absolutely amazing program. 
I know Portia and myself have enjoyed every single minute of presenting this amazing program and really interacting with you participants. I'm obviously disappointed because I only get to do this on a Friday with you guys. I know Portia has been very involved in your businesses, but from all of the things that she shared with the team, we can really, really, we know that there's been tremendous growth just in your businesses. And so from our side, we want to thank all of our, firstly, all of the sponsors for putting together this program. And then of course, we want to thank all of our, our experts who have joined us and given so selflessly of themselves week after week to empower what they've learned in their journeys to the entrepreneurs on this program. And then of course, to Portia for being such an amazing co-host. And of course, all of our participants for being here week after week, showing up and doing your part. Without further delay, let's get all of those cameras on. Um, team, if we can take down the video, let's get all of the, 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 the cameras on. Let's get everybody to put their cameras on so we can take our final picture. Um, yeah. Everybody looking lovely today. <laughs> We've got twins. Oh, and it's so. <laughs> I see so. Come on, guys, let's get those videos on. Let's get those videos on. I was struggling um, with the speed, I think. No problem, we'll get as many as we can. I'm on Bali, Bali, Halid, Nomsa, Lerato, Nikosi, Silwani, Musika, Nilisibana. Guys, we need your pictures. Do we have uh, everyone I'm, com I'm coming to eat there, okay? <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you to send me that dress. I'm coming this weekend. I want that burger. <laughs> You'll, yeah, no, I'll, make, I'll make sure you get it. <laughs> Beautiful. Let's, let's get everyone on. I see Ivor still has some video issues. Maybe you can stop sharing that virtual background. Ivor, I was so. But let's try. Tulani. All right, team, are you taking pictures? Yes. Naba. Let's keep our smiles on. There we go. There we can see the Assista Foundation team there in the boardroom. Beautiful. There's Ruth. There's Ivor. Good to see you guys. Good to see everybody. All right, everybody smile. Everybody say money. <laughs> everybody, everybody say December. <laughs> Let's get everybody smiling. <laughs> and then, Yay. do we have enough team, enough pictures from the team? Yeah, I think we have it. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you so much, everybody. That's a wrap. It's been an amazing program. Um, we, we won't see you in this forum again, but we will see your name in lights. We will see your business excelling and we will see you in the news when you make it big. Continue to apply everything you've learned in the program and all the best. Be safe during the festive season and continue to grow your businesses and continue making our country a great place to be in. My name is Darren August. It's been an absolute pleasure being your host on these webinars. Portia, final words from you. Yes, yes. I just wanted to say Asisa Foundation will be celebrating the 10 years of existence next year. So please watch on the platforms. Uh, but anyway, we'll, we'll be with you. We'll, be, we'll send you uh, the details so that you know what's happening. All right. And yeah, join in, to, join in the celebration. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. I'm not going to miss everybody. you. I know. I'm going to speak to you thank this you. week and next week. Happy Friday, everybody. Enjoy the rest of thank the day. Thank you, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye, bye, bye. <laughs> bye. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye.